We're in North Vancouver, up on one of the mountains very close to Grouse. I would call it a West Coast modern house. We bought it in 2021. So we purchased it online without ever seeing it. The housing market was going crazy. The prices were going up and up and up. And so uh, we put a bid in on this house and we got it sight unseen. For me, there wasn't enough of the real true West Coast sort of spirit to it. I was kind of really hoping for a post and beam house. And this one had popcorn ceilings, green walls, maple floors. It was not what I wanted. And I knew I could do the furnishings and I could do the fabrics, but I really needed someone to do the kitchen drawings and the bathroom drawings and really look at the space as a whole. So the first thing I did was call some designers. I called a company here in Vancouver called Ann Daughters, run by Emma Sims and Darcy Hanna. And they were really amazing at sort of seeing small changes we could make to the layout that would have a huge difference. Their small tweaks just turned the house around. The house had been renovated in the 1990s. And I think at that point they had put down these very shiny maple floors. And we stained all of the maple a much darker, richer color to match the ceilings. When you walk in the front door, the first thing you saw was this drywall with a cutout with sort of some glass shelves. It was a little bit too delicate and pretty for us. So we put in a cedar slat wall with some special little holes in it that we could add our keys or some decorations to. We didn't really change the floor plan at all. It has a really good flow. It's a very circular flow. In the living room, we added a cedar wall because that was very characteristic of what the homes would have had back then. And we built into the nook some cedar shelving and bench seating, which just gave us a place to put some of our favorite things. The main two things we kept were the original cedar ceiling and the rock fireplace in the living room. One of the things we loved about the house was the view. We're sort of situated up on the second level here. So the view out the back is like being in a tree house. You look out the dining room window and it's just a wall of actually cedar trees. And below that is actually a small stream that runs through our property. And if you open the windows anytime during the day, you can hear the stream, you know, burbling along. And it's a big change from our Toronto home where we were, you know, right downtown on an urban street. So this is a big welcome change for us. Biophilic design is a really big thing right now and cedar is a great way for us to just bring some of that nature outside into our house. And it just gives us an overall sense of well-being and, you know, helps reduce stress and it just feels really great in here. Because the cedar on the ceiling was original to the house, we really wanted to make sure that the cedar on the walls looked like it had always been there. So we reached out to the people at Real Cedar who were great in helping us figure out which cedar was best. The grain on the cedar walls is really beautiful and it just adds an extra depth and some texture to the house. The furniture in this room is mainly vintage. The sofa is from a consignment store and I had it recovered in a Knoll fabric. The coffee table is a Facebook marketplace find. We did have it lowered and had the top refinished. And the two chairs are also from Facebook marketplace. It's become one of my favorite places to shop. They were just bought down the road from some people in North Vancouver. And the rug was bought on Cherish. So you're an online shopper. I'm an online shopper. You bought your house online? <laughs> I bought my house online. I bought my furniture online. It's the way things are done these days. So this was an awkward niche that I really had no idea what to do with. And I actually suggested, let's just drywall it over. But our designers said, no, I think we should make it into a feature. And so they suggested we added these thick cedar shelves. And uh, it was a great idea. We also extended the shelves beyond the drywall here, which really makes them look like they've always been here, rather than just sort of inserting a flat shelf. I think it's turned out really well. The table is by a local Vancouver company called Lock and Mortis. They do the most beautiful woodwork, and for us it was definitely a splurge. It's one of the few pieces that's new in the house. The chairs are from Brooklyn. I bought them off of Cherish, and we had them recovered on the fronts and the backs with two different materials. I just saw them and I thought they would be perfect for the table. In the principal bedroom, one of the main things we did was get rid of the popcorn ceiling. We also added a cedar wall to the back to create a headboard and we put two side tables on it. And that was really the biggest addition we made to the room. 
The ensuite was a full renovation. It was a very 80s bathroom in there before with a walled in glass shower with brass detailing and a curvy tub and it, it just had to go. It was one of the things I hated the most about the house. So we put in a bathroom that actually looks a lot like it might have been there in the 70s. We used this terracotta tile and created an entire bathtub and shower out of it. And then we used cedar again for the vanity and we added some shelves to either side of it, which kind of gives it an interesting look. The countertops are by Caesar Stone and they're just a perfect surface for a bathroom because they don't leave any marks or stains and they're really easy to clean. I can't think of anything better to put in a bathroom. So we didn't actually have room for a full five foot tub, which is what you would normally put in. But I refuse to just have one big shower. I love a bath and especially here in Vancouver where it rains a lot, you want to have a bath. So we found this small soaker tub and while it's not long, it is very deep and it's super cozy to just get in there on a rainy day. The bathroom really has the best view in the house. There's windows on both sides of the corners and when you stand there, it's just a wall of greenery. We have no curtains, no drapes, no blinds. When you're having a shower in the morning, I literally see birds fly by the windows and you hear the sounds of nature and it's just like having a shower outside. The kids' bathroom, we wanted something fun and playful for them. So our designers recommended that we put in a yellow linoleum floor. And I have to admit, at first I was like, mm, I'm not so sure about the linoleum but we went along with it and it's actually one of my favorite things. I love it. It's so easy to clean and it just makes a great statement in that room. We used Caesar Stone quartz countertops. Again, they're easy to clean, they're easy to maintain. We also added a red faucet, some red handles, some red knobs, and it all just kind of comes together really nicely. I told the kids they could renovate their rooms any way they wanted to, and I gave them each a budget of $1,000 my daughter got to it right away, and I would say within two days, she had planned her entire room. You can probably see that my daughter is a huge Taylor Swift fan. It has just consumed our lives for the past six months. She just loves her, and we play her music all the time, and we make friendship bracelets, and we would do anything to get tickets to that concert. <laughs> so let me know if you have some. My son was not as eager, so after a bit of prodding and pushing, we kind of figured out a wall color together and we figured out a few other things and yeah, I more or less helped him with that one, but he definitely told me when there was something he didn't like. One of the areas we really focused on is the main thoroughfare that we use to get in and out of the house through the garage. And originally the washer and dryer used to be right in that hallway. So it became this very tight squeeze that we would all get through with our backpacks and groceries and it just wasn't working. And one of the things they did was to add the laundry room to the office and make it a dual function space. And I was super happy. It just makes it that much closer for me to do things. The Mila washer and dryer are super compact and fit into the laundry closet perfectly. They have the twin dose dispensing system, which automatically dispenses detergent, which makes it so easy. You never have to fill a canister. The laundry sink is a Sil granite Blanco sink. It's white to match the Caesar Stone countertops. And we have a Blanco faucet as well. And it can be completely closed off if I want it to be. And then we put a cedar desk right in front of the window and it just works perfectly. Also, once we took the washer and dryer out of the hallway, it allowed us to put in a real mud room. So now we have hooks where the kids can hang their bags when they come in from school. We have a full closet where we can put our hats and our scarves and it's just streamlined and it just makes coming in from the garage that much better. I used to live in a Victorian house and so this house is completely different. I felt this house sort of deserved a 60s, 70s vibe. We didn't want to completely replicate the 60s and 70s. We didn't want it to feel kitschy, but this house is from that time and region and it just seemed to make sense for the house. We've brought back the cedar, We've brought back what we think the original floors would have been. You know, we've done it through a lens of 2023, so it doesn't feel kitschy, but I hope the house is happy. I hope it feels like it's back, back to how it used to be. I love my house now. You know, I look around and I actually can't believe it's my house and it just feels really good to be here. But there's more, including the kitchen in the next video. So come back and see it.